As is common for complex oscillators, the lifeform's double helix has a so-called contour section to shape the waveform coming out of the primary oscillator. One of the things that sets the double helix apart from other complex oscillators, not only does it have a wave folder, it also has a low-pass gate built in. We'll start by looking at the wave folder. I've gone back to using the default sine wave routed into the wave folder. You see it comes in on input number one here and is normal to sine one. But the wave folder in the double helix does have a second input and a little mixer there, which means you can either override the sine wave or add in a second waveform. As I mentioned before, the sine wave, the green trace out of the primary oscillator, has a slightly different harmonic structure. And the yellow trace, the output of the wave folder at its default setting, also bends the sine wave around a little bit and actually has even more complex harmonics. Let's bring that up right now. And it has even more high harmonics. The wave folder output of the double helix is a bit lower than the normal oscillator. That's why I boost it a little bit using my external levitate, which can boost the signal in addition to attenuate it. Unlike blade shape and pulse width, the wave folder does have a default knob that does not require an external signal. It's the timbre control. By carefully rotating that, we get different folds and different harmonics and therefore a different sound. Very classic look. But you see that it does tend to keep that broad flat area, the top and bottom, which gives you that strong fundamental, but it has a lot of folds, which gives you the very strong high harmonics. As we keep pushing this, the resulting waveform almost looks like a bent square wave, although the harmonic structure is very different with a few different format peaks in there. Here's pushed to its extreme. Now the timbre control only adds to the folds. If you bring an external voltage into the timbre input, you can actually use this as a sort of ECA and take the signal down to zero. Let me show that briefly. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my external control voltage amount here, plug it in directly into the timbre CV right here. It adds to whatever you may have selected with the voltage controlled routers, A or B. Increase the timbre CV depth and start to increase my voltage. As I go a little bit into the negative voltage, I've lost my yellow waveform and lost my sound. If I give it a positive voltage, I get that wave folding depth that I expect. I expect somewhere in here may be the possibility to come up with an alternative to a low pass gate, something as a VCA and a wave folder built into one by running an envelope through here and carefully offsetting its voltage. But anyway, let's go back to normal wave folder function. In addition to twirling knobs, we can also use this modulation router to animate the wave folder automatically. For example, the LFO is defaulted to bus B, so I'll go ahead and take the timbre input, flip it down to B. It's a bipolar signal going negative and positive. So by going negative, you see it's actually shutting off the waveform. I'll turn this down to a gentler amount and offset that control voltage upward. The sound never quite goes away. I can go ahead and have gradual changes. I can override the normaling to have, say, random shaping. I can override it with an external signal, such as my envelope, to get that classic envelope wave folder sound. Again, this is the offset. We can go back to sine wave and the depth. Love that sound. That's a very nice sounding wave folder. Or we can go to the other bus and frequency modulate the wave folder. So I'll flip this up to A and start increasing the depth that is normal to oscillator number two.
fade the wave folder depth in and out so you can hear just the FM oscillators by themselves, and then with frequency modulated wave folding back in. Remember, we're not hearing the LFO, it's on bus B, we're using bus A, which is FM right now. I'll turn the FM modulation for the wave folder off. Right now we're just hearing the beating of the oscillators themselves, and then turn back to FM. And if I wanted to mix FM and enveloping together, I can use an external mixer, or I can just go ahead and plug directly into the timbre CV. The tuning of the oscillators here. And play around the depth. If I wanted to, I could envelope that as well. sound, and again as I always point out, you can layer this with your normal semi-modular or other oscillators. Now I'm using the filter inside the Moog to mellow out these harmonics on sustained notes. But a nice bonus of the double helix is that it also has a built-in low-pass gate. Now you may remember, a low-pass gate is a combination of a low-pass filter and a VCA underneath the same control voltage. Inside the double helix, this comes after the wave shaper and can be used to further modify the harmonics generated by FM in the oscillators and inside that wave folder. I have been routing the lifeforms back through a mixer and into the Moog to run through its own filter. I'll remove the Moog's oscillator from the mix and open up its filter. and turn off the drone mode to better hear the envelopes. Maybe a little longer decay so we can hear what's happening with the dynamic processing of the low pass gate. And I'm going to increase the complexity of this waveform so we have more high harmonics. Pass gate section of the double helix is based on the Lifeform's dynamic impulse filter, which happens to be one of my favorite low pass gates. It has a nice two pole saline key filter, a VCA, and what they call their dynamics circuitry, which replaces a normal Vactral. This allows you to tune in the amount of decay impressed upon your control voltage coming into the low pass gate. Vactrals are known to vary from piece to piece, so different low pass gates may have different decay amounts. Here you get to custom dial it in. Right now I have everything opened up. I'm taking actually a trigger from my shared gate, run through the dynamic response section to give it maximum decay, and then the dynamic CV affects how much of that resulting envelope is fed into the final dynamics amount. Right now it's opened up all the way, but as I reduce it, you'll hear the filter start to close down. They've carefully tuned this low pass gate so the filter closes before the VCA does. That makes it very useful because you can get a tonal change but still have a lot of sound passing through. I'll pull this down. And you see the waveform start to simplify. Some of the higher harmonics disappear in the harmonic spectrum and the sound starts to dull. And now I filtered it down to a fairly simple sound, not too far off from our basic sine wave, with a few more harmonics present. And then this last quarter or fifth of the turn of the dial actually closes the VCA in this dynamic processing. When I have that turned all the way down, there's no bias being added to this low pass gate, and it's relying entirely upon the envelope coming through this dynamic response and dynamic CV depth section. Now we have a nice short decay. I can change this dynamic response to make it a shorter decay. Of 
quite damp there to where it's just a little tick or to where it rings out or change the depth of the dynamic CV coming into the low pass gate. And that will again affect how much that filter is being opened in addition to the VCA. You hear it get duller there as not as much voltage is going to open up the filter. You can balance these two controls off against each other to have the VCA still stay open. I'll make that down just a short filter tick. And then add a little bit more bias to the low pass gate. Still let some sound through while I sustain a note. Now we have just the attack coming through. Something more full bodied and change the decay. Now, in addition to taking my gate and plugging it into this impulse input, which is causing this dynamic circuit to decay naturally, I'm going to borrow one of our envelopes and directly control the dynamic section. Now, I'm currently using this envelope to control that little FM attack. And I'm using the other envelope to open up the Moog's filter as well as the wave folder. Let's go ahead and borrow this since we're not enveloping the Moog's filter anymore and run that directly into the dynamic CV input here. That injects it straight into the circuitry. I can reduce the added decay. So now we're dependent completely on this envelope shape. Close that down, use the sustain amount. Treat this like a two-pole filter with a VCA. So let's go ahead and pull the envelope going to the FM. So now we have a very complex sound. And use either dynamics or the decay. The envelope works pretty well, but I actually like using the dynamic impulse input and then relying on the dynamics decay to give me my envelope shape. I'll take the ordinary envelope out of the path. That gives me that really nice, very quick decay to dampen the filter and a long tail. I love that shape and I use the dynamic impulse filter, which is a larger version of this section all the time and patches on my main system. Now, one last thing I mentioned earlier is that there are two inputs to this contour section. So I could override the sine wave coming in or add a second waveform if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and restore this. Just that short blip. And then let me patch in an additional waveform from the second oscillator directly into this second input to create a more interesting sound. Actually, I think I'm going to use the Sawtooth instead. Now I have basically a two to one submixer, sine wave from here, sawtooth from here, going through the wave shaper, and then through the dynamic impulse section. So you can get a quite complex sound out of just the double helix without any additional processing. But again, if you want to, you can go ahead and mix back in another oscillator. Get a very thick, complex sound. And if you want to add back in the filter on your semi-modular or other external modules. Oh, I stole its envelope. Let's give it its envelope back again. Here we go. UCF cutoff is right there. Turn up my output a little bit. Now that's the whole point of the Eurorack expansion series is to show you what adding one module can do to expand the sounds of your overall modular system or just a semi-modular synth like the Moog Mother 32.